and I'm going to refer to my notes. I like, usually like to tell a few stories as we go along, but there really isn't time for that today. And I know you're going to have a blast of a time at the, uh, the roundtable discussions with Elaine and all the other presenters because uh, she's really got the answers. She really helped me out over the years. So here we go. I was born on a family farm and I spent all my life trying to understand how, uh, how it all worked and grow the business. And I got a whole lot happier when I started to understand how the microbiology on the leaf surface and, and in the soil, how it all worked. And it, it's a long process, but it doesn't need to be as difficult. How many people's heads are kind of spinning from the last hour's discussion? Yeah. yeah, I was like that for about two years. And, uh, and my dad, which you know many know what that's like, farming with your family, uh, and the folks who work for us, uh, to help us understand what we were doing, I tried to make a cartoon out of the whole thing. And, uh, and I, I thought of the microorganisms as people. And I could do that because, you know, we did a lot of animal research around the farm. We studied a lot of psychology and all animals were like people to me. I could see the similarities. And uh, so that's how I, I started to really understand some of the things that Elaine was talking about. So uh, in, the, in healthy soil, there's millions and millions of organisms per teaspoon. But uh, so these guys are Okay, so they're uh, and houses and towns and highways and byways and alleyways, all these places allowing the air and the water to move freely through your soil, keeping stuff healthy. It's my first time with one of these buttons. <laughs> kind of wild. Usually I do my talks in the field. I'm a lot more comfortable standing on my farm having the real props rather than, you know, a screen full of stuff. This guy's pretty cool looking. He's, uh, what else are they doing? They're working. They're working for your plants. And I'm not sure exactly what this guy's working on, but it definitely looks like he's got lots of tools and arms to work those tools with. So uh, we're going to talk more about that, that working in a minute, but uh, I want to tell you what's going on in my farm. The first 30 years, farming was really complicated for me, learning about pests and diseases and pesticides and herbicides and fungicides and fertilizer and irrigation equipment, lots of other equipment, half of it broken right when you need it, a lot of maintenance, and my life's a lot easier now because I got one answer for every single issue going on in the farm, and that's compost or compost tea. Compost tea is easily applied. <laughs> you can use a sprayer, modify your sprayer real easily, take all the filters out of it and you have a gentle pump, or you can use a watering can. I love the watering can, no fixing there. Or, or the hose. And you know, if you're making it on the farm, you can use it pretty liberally. All our own products on the farm, compost and tea. We make, uh, we make designer compost, specific for specific crops, vibrating at the right speed and with the biology that's necessary to uh, make those crops work, or to help those crops work. We don't make anything really, other than compost and tea. We make some really nice products at a great price. This makes me a happy farmer. So how does it all work? That's what I came to talk to you about. Um, there's a few things. Elaine really said it all, but I'm going to try and just make it as simple as I can. Uh, here's some of the things that the, uh, the T will be working on. Yeah, I thought it was on that slide, but we'll start with that one, compaction, because that's, that's definitely an issue. 
So teas full of billions and billions of tiny characters cruising on the water and carrying their lunch with them because they're ready to go to work. You've put that, that lunch right in the tea for them. And uh, lots of critters in the soil means that uh, the soil's fluffed up. Those cities and towns and airways, passageways are there, places for your roots to go, places for the oxygen to move and exchange every time it rains. You know, when it rains, it pushes that old atmosphere out of the soil. The rain soaks on down in and it, uh, it draws fresh atmosphere down, down in with it, giving you lots of oxygen, supporting the good guys, uh, space for roots. When that soil gets compaction, how does soil get compacted? Uh, in my early days, I used to think it was where the cattle grazed or where we drove the tractor all the time. I had no idea that, you know, because I was a conventional farmer for 30 plus years. I had no idea that we were killing non-target organisms whenever we put anything on the soil in any amount at all. And generally, it didn't matter what amount it was, we're killing non-target organisms. When you're killing them, the cities and towns in the soil and on the leaf surface, but mostly in the soil, they get empty. And uh, abandoned towns collapse. That soil collapses, the air doesn't exchange the same, the oxygen levels go down. This becomes a bad community, an un 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 unhealthy place for your roots to grow. And, uh, and typically, they just won't grow there. They won't grow through that compacted layer caused by steel, tillage equipment. Um, I love the no-till feeling around this room. It's, steel is not your friend when it comes to your microbiology. And then any, uh, any materials you put in that ground could have an adverse effect on your microbiology, making it soil collapse, goes anaerobic. Remember what anaerobic soil is? It's dirt, doesn't grow crops. Better press some buttons here. Must be halfway through it. There's, you know, some healthy looking roots with some space to grow or some comp compacted soil right next to it. So, get fed and watered. Uh, Elaine talked about that, the biology is ex exchanging uh, with the plants. Uh, the, the cake, uh, the minerals and the water that they need right when they need them in exchange for the, the cake and cookies that the plant is making. So there's all those guys in the soil just uh, waiting for their marching orders. Go get me some calcium, get me a little phosphorus, a little magnesium, a couple of drips of water, and I will whip you up a batch of chocolate chip cookies like, like the kind you really love. The funguses greatly extend the root system. Uh, I know Elaine would have liked to have told you about, you know, how, well, she, she did a wee bit. How big are the roots? You know, if I was a tree, here's from the ground up, and here's the root system. And then that fungus extends that root system. You know, if, if it's, someone's going looking for water or nutrients, the, the, the largest living organism on the planet, as I understand it, is a fungus that's so microscopic, it takes 100,000 strands to be able to see it with your naked eye, and it's kilometers long. It's the largest living organism on the planet, feeding trees. So plants ask for the nutrients that exactly they want, when they want them, and the fungus delivers. Plant says, I need nitrogen, Bacteria fixing nitrogen right in the plant, dining on cake and cookies, pumping the nitrogen back to the plant. So plant disease, Lane touched on that pretty nicely too. Disease protection. Those little guys are building a moat around your plant, keeping it safe from disease. Mycorrhizal fungus protecting the root system. And uh, who's paying for this crop protection? The plants paid in full, cake and cookies. I love this system. Pass, the same sort of deal. 
I spent one season way back uh, working as a field scout, looking at the relationships between uh, plant sap bricks, the sugars in a plant, and the uh, the amount of pests on the on the leaf surface or in the trap thousands and thousands of traps and thousands of brick samples, it was really clear that plants that live on a balanced diet fed by the biology have high bricks and they don't have pests. Remember this story uh, that uh, Jamie told yesterday about taking out the fence row in the field and that area doesn't have pests on your crop? Well, that's because that fence rose relatively undisturbed. It's got good biology feeding the plants, and high bricks plants have little or no pests. On, on the other hand, should be probably flipping. On the other hand, low bricks plants have pests. The, the plant actually calls them in, pages them. Pests are nature's cleanup crew. And uh, these, these potatoes here uh, weren't eaten well. But the, uh, the, the beetles were eaten well, and uh, so we made them a nice cup of tea. And in came the superheroes, and uh, they were doing some eating of their own. Exactly the same thing is going on in the soil. It's just microscopic. Uh, you can't see it unless you get a microscope and take a course. And even then, it took me, I don't know how long, but quite a few bottles of whiskey and a lot of, <laughs> a lot of late nights. I do mean a, quite a few. A long time before one night sitting in my lab, um, which is just a nice office, it all just kind of came alive that, you know, I was blown up way into the power and I realized that, oh my God, it is all moving. It's all moving. And uh, that's when my life really started to change. Weeds. I had lots of, lots of interesting talk about weeds. And they have benefits. I see you're coming for me. Coming for you. I can usually take 15 minutes turned into 45 without getting yanked off the stage. But anyway, yes, I'm not excited, exciting enough. Weeds have benefits. They do a good soil analysis for you. If, you. if you just Google the mineral makeup of weeds, whatever weed you're seeing predominantly in your field or right in that spot, you know, where he's standing, where I'm standing, the soil's different. And we'll take, you know, a bunch of soil samples throughout the room, blend them all up into a bag, get a blanket mix, spread it out on the field. Where that weed's growing, there is a mineral deficiency right there. Whatever that weed makeup is, that's what the deficiency is. If you add a little bit of that mineral for the soil, that weed won't germinate there very likely anymore. And that weed is made up of that, so of that mineral that you're needing. So if you can figure out how to get that weed, either kill it right there, flame weeder or whatever, or collect those weeds off the field, or we've heard all this talk about cover crops, seeding them down, and cocktail mixes. I love this idea, but damn it, just let the field germinate. What a cocktail mix, exactly what you want. Collect that up with your forage harvester, blow it into a pile with some manure, a little bit of rock dust, and maybe some fish hydrolysate, a little bit of other food. Man, you've got some compost happening, Blow that right back out on the field. It is exactly what you want. Then there's other things. Really lucky, my little organic farm, we sell those weeds. We do a weed walk. Charge the customers to come and listen to a nutritionist, a herbologist. She tells them, you know, what the mineral quality, what the, the nutritional benefits, what the health benefits, medicinal benefits are of eating these weeds or making teas out of them. People buy the weeds up and it's kind of a good deal. Be a happy farmer. How do you tell if you've got good soil biology? One way is a penetrometer. Shove it into the soil that goes down three feet without any, uh, without any more than the weight of a case of beer on it or, you know, 20 pounds. 
you've probably got good biology, no compaction layer, everything's going to be moving. It's going to, it's going to work pretty good. You can make a penetrometer out of just a, uh, an electric sheep fence stake, sharpen the end of it, put a handle on, you know what 20 pounds feels like, or 30 pounds, or 150 pounds. You know, and you know when you run into a rock, you get to feel it. You, you drive one of those around for a while, you're not long. It's not hard to shove a rod through that kind of stuff. Tea, you get a teapot. And an air pump, a tea bag, some, some clean water, a little bit of compost, a little bit of food resources. That's like the smoothie you're drinking this morning. Hopefully it's got a lot of stuff in. Into the tank, flip the switch, run some air for a couple of days and uh, put, it in your, put it in your hose or your tea can. Lane made me really think a few years ago. So I'll end with that quote. Thanks for having me. It's been delightful. You're an innovative group. <laughs>